I was born 17 years ago. For the past six months, I've been in my basement playing Skyrim. But for all those hours, I've never understood what the hell has been going on. I scoured the internet, searching for wikis, to find even the most obscure events in the Elder Scrolls. Behold, sunlight now enters my room. These are the early hours of the morning, and my few moments of free time. Fueled by obscene amounts of caffeine, I search for the events of the Elder Scrolls lore. Hey, I'm the Loopy Alchemist, and welcome to this episode of the Elder Scrolls lore. Since this is the Dark Brotherhood, and we have a ton of material to cover, um, I'm actually going to split it into two episodes. So, in this one, part one, we're going to cover, uh... Sort of just the general overview of the group, what they do do exactly, and the various origin stories behind their foundation. And in part two, we'll cover the history of the guild right from the beginning up until present day. So without further ado, please enjoy. The Dark Brotherhood is a guild of assassins shrouded in mystery which has been active all over Tamriel throughout their existence. Well, what they do certainly isn't legal. They've typically been tolerated or ignored, mainly because they're a bunch of frickin' assassins and people are scared of them. But they also have a bunch of other tricks up their collective sleeves, such as bribery, blackmail, coercion, and a whole bunch of nasty activities. They are, of course, a very mysterious group, as you'd expect, and our information on them, especially early on, is very dicey. But we do know for sure that they've been bitter rivals of the Morag Ta'an, another assassin's uh, guild based primarily in Morrowind. I actually have another episode on that, if you want to go watch it. I'd appreciate it, because I like views. Since the Second Era. The Dark Brotherhood is also very well known for their worship of the Dread Father, Sithis. Also, yes, the Dark Brotherhood is very inclusive gender-wise, Dark Sisters are allowed, but they're called Brothers, because the Dark Brotherhood doesn't like to update its PC lingo. So like any other organization, the Dark Brotherhood must abide by rules, known as the Five Tenets. And no, we are not talking about the Tenth Doctor. So these are never to dishonor the Night Mother, betray the Dark Brotherhood, disobey or refuse to carry out a order from a superior, betray the Dark Brotherhood, which I've said already, but it is very important. Astrid, you should learn this. Steal possessions from a Dark Brotherhood, and do not kill a Dark Brother. Breaking one of these tenets involves the invoking the wrath of Sithis. In pretty sharp contrast to the Morag Tons' veneration of the Daedric Prince Mafala, the Dark Brotherhood worships the Void Sithis. However, they see their murders from much more of a business perspective rather than the deeply religious and honor perspective of the Morag Ta'an, and are thus viewed to be far more pragmatic. 
This, as you can expect, has led to a lot of enmity between the Dark Brotherhood and the Morecton over the years, but believe me, we will be going far more into that later. One thing I should quickly explain is I previously mentioned that the Dark Brotherhood venerates the Dread Father, Sithis. Now, I trust most of us are familiar with Mafala, who's the Daedric Prince of Conspiracies and a whole bunch of other nasty stuff, but Sithis, or Padome, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lore reference and it's kind of obscure, but is a representation of the one primordial state of chaos, which is kind of why it's the patron of the Dark Brotherhood. Sithis is described as an equal but opposing foe to Anwil, and I think that's how pronouncing that. Ah, I think that's how I uh, pronounce that. But basically, it's kind of another complicated lore thingy, but it's kind of the either god or force that created all things, but it's kind of obscure, and even I'm not too sure of that. So, going back on track, the leader, well, official leader, of the Dark Brotherhood is the Mysterious Night Mother. Now, there are a ton of theories who exactly she is, and what exactly she is. So, some theories are that she used to be a member of the Morag Tan, and went over to the Dark Brotherhood and eventually became the leader of it during the split. Other variations of this have her murdering her five children in the honor of Sithis and becoming his wife. And some people even think that she's actually Mafala, and there's another one that has her being a psychopath working for the Thieves Guild who kills people. But again, we shall go more into that later. She's most well known for her role in the Black Sacrament, which is a really messed up ritual that allows you to contact her to arrange a contract with the Dark Brotherhood. This involves stabbing some body parts, including a heart, a skull, bones, and flesh, having a circle of creepy candles, even though they smell nicely, but... I don't know, all the flesh in the room's just kinda bad feng shui. And it goes, sweet mother, sweet mother, send your child unto me, for the sins of the unworthy must be baptized in blood and fear. And I just read that in the most unfitting tone ever. Oh well. So, the Dark Brotherhood, um, besides the official leader, the Night Motherhood, is commanded by the hierarchy of the Black Hand, which is composed of a listener and four speakers. The listener listens to the Night Mother and relays her orders to the speakers, and the speakers then dispatch their orders to the various brothers, and by that I mean like all the assassins within the group, to carry out the Night Mother's orders. For a lot of the Dark Brothers' history, they've had a very special relationship with Argonians, who form a special but now almost extinct sect within the Dark Brotherhood, known as the, as the Shadow Scales. The Dark Brotherhood usually, um, just recruits them if they're born under the sign of the Shadow, and take them right at birth to be trained in the art of stealth, assassination, and all that good stuff to become expert assassins for the Dark Brotherhood. But as I've said, during the Fourth Era, this appears to have kind of died out for uh, reasons we're going to go into later, but again, it's still all up in the air. After all, a group that's been along for this long probably still has a few more tricks up their sleeve. Just look at the Morag Tawn. They're still in Solstheim and are trying to kill the dude from House Redoran. Don't tell them I told you. This is spoilers. I probably should have said that before. But anyways, moving on, the Dark Brotherhood's origins are no doubt connected with the Morag Tan, who are far more ancient than them. How, though, is one thing everyone has trouble agreeing on. The most popular theory, and the one that I happen to believe, is that the, brother the Brotherhood split away for religious reasons. In First Era, 
2920, the Morag Tong assassinated the Emperor Riemann III. The Tong also performed an equally high-profile assassination in Second Era 324 on Riemann's successor, who had actually ordered Riemann III's assassination over 300 years before. And yes, it's the same guy, they've got long lifespans, he must have been a elf of some sort, I think, but don't quote me on that. So, this started a frenzy across the nobles in Tamriel, who started kicking the crap out of the Morag Tan all over the continent. I know I'm kind of overlapping with the Morag Tan episode, but these guys kind of go hand in hand. Morag Tan then, of course, appeals to the highest power in Morwind to ensure their existence. But at that point, the Morag Tons really just confined to Morwind. However, not everyone was super cool with this. Also, one of the main things within the um, Morag Tan, who was unsubbed about this, was that. One of the stipulations of the Morag Tan being allowed to exist is that they had to start worshipping Vivek instead of Mafala. Vivek, by the way, is part of the tribunal in Morrowind. He was one of the um, companions of the Nerevar, but end up achieving immortality and sort of semi-divinity, I don't really know what you'd call it, by Azura's curse. And if this is really a whole nother topic altogether, so I might actually make a future episode on him. Or in the meantime, you could just play Morrowind. But this is where we think the break occurred. Another similar theory is that following Versi Du Shea's assassination and the subs subsequent persecution of the Morag Tan, Sithis spoke to a former member and wanted him to form a new guild of assassins to sort of marry business and murder to better so satisfy the Void's hunger for souls, and to worship him, not Mafala. Another f <coughs> another another story supposedly taken from an interview between the author Enric Milnes and the Night Mother says that the Dark Brotherhood was actually an offshoot of the Thieves Guild, not the Morag Tan. Milnes, and again I have no way of knowing if I pronounced that correctly, someone yell at me in the comments. If I am well, actually, don't. Please be nice about it. But anyways, he was assassinated shortly after he had it published. This account asserts that sometime in the Second Era, a few members of the Thieves' Guild found it to be uh, more profitable to kill people while they were performing a burglary. Well, not really more profitable, just more um, efficient, I guess. And the woman who would become the Night Mother actually um, started this trend. But the Thieves' Guild at the time disagreed with them, and they still do for that matter, so they went away and formed another guild. However, I don't really buy this one, partly because it's only associated with uh, one source. Also, the thing with the Morag Tan just makes a lot more sense, and I think the fact that the guy was killed pretty brutally, actually, right after he was public, the book was published, might speak that the Dark Brotherhood was angry about this being, like, written. Well, I mean, of course it does, but I guess you could take away two different meanings. One, they don't want their, well, true origin to really get out there, but... I don't know, I guess you could use it to argue either way. The one thing, if you actually read the account, just the way he's killed with the uh, two stones, um, kind of goes with what the Night Mother said early on which was her, like, supposed calling card for murders. Again, it's a very interesting book if you, uh, want to read it. It can be found pretty easily online. But yeah, it's up in the air. But I still agree with the first one, which is they split from the Morag Tan for, uh, religious reasons. 
So this is where I'm going to stop this episode for now. Join me in part two, where we'll cover the history of the Dark Brotherhood. <laughs>